Buyers agent Jay Pace here for Providence Property Group with a market update for the month that was February 2023. On this channel, we talk about all things property, but mostly I read the news and separate the facts and the fiction so you don't have to. Well, we are very excited to announce that Providence Property Group is nominated for the 2023 Local Business Champion Awards. As you may remember, we were honored to win the Local Business Awards last year in 2022, which qualified us for the Champion Awards, and we're hoping to continue our winning streak this year. As a buyer's agency, we strive to provide our clients with the best possible services and support throughout the entire home buying process. And we work tirelessly to ensure that our clients find their dream homes. And we're passionate about helping them definitely achieve those goals. So you know, thank you for being a part of this journey. Uh, thank you for your support and we can't wait to continue serving you in the years to come. If you haven't already cast your vote, I'm leaving a link in the video description below and uh, you can vote for us then. So thank you so much. All right, let's talk about interest rates. And news from probably the most misunderstood and definitely hated individual in Australia at the moment. In his first public comments since Tuesday's decision, that was last Tuesday, by the RBA's board to lift the cash rate for the 10th straight meeting by another 25 basis points to 3.6%, RBA Governor Philip Lowe says that the board is edging closer to a pause on interest rate hikes, but decisions will be made based on incoming economic data. I don't know. I'm sick of making excuses for this guy. Um, raising interest rates is a lagging indicator. You should obviously, after you've raised them a couple of times, wait and see how uh, the economic data comes after. Um, but to do 10 consecutive in a row, that's just crazy. Um, and I don't think anyone's really trusting anything this guy says anymore, considering they were saying to people they weren't going to touch interest rates until 2023, back in 2021. And then they started moving them in May anyway. So I don't think these guys have a lot of credit in the bank, so to speak. Uh, if we have a look here, we can actually see uh, the old cash rate uh, at 3.35% and then the new cash rate at 3.60% at 0.25%. Uh, and that's where we're currently at today. Now let's take a look at the winners and the losers for the month. CoreLogic's Home Value Index recorded a sharp reduction in the rate of decline through February. Now the national index declined by 0.14% over the month. So that's a very low decline over for the capital cities. It's actually the smallest monthly fall since May 2022, which was minus point. One three of a percent when rate hikes hikes actually started to commence. So we are starting to see that. Um, if only someone smart, handsome with a Greek and Maltese background told you about that last year. Oh wait, that was me. Uh, a zero point three percent rise in Sydney dwelling values was the most significant driver of national deceleration. So I'm just going to say that again. Sydney increased by 0.3 of a percent last month. Okay, now I know it's only 0.3 of a percent, but this is actually the first increase that Sydney's seen in in uh, value since December 2022. Sorry, 2021, not 2022, 2021. So it's quite interesting because uh, Sydney's first negative uh, index result was in January 2022, and that was way before interest rates started being rise, ra raised in May anyway. Uh, if we have a look here, I think it's quite interesting. This is uh, a cool little table that just shows COVID through to the peak. And we can see, and, and please, by all means, pause the video and have a look at these in your own time because I'm not going to go through every one of them. But definitely we can see, you know, Sydney down 27.7% from, let's say, February, March 2020. Um, and since January 2022, which is the month um, of the recent peak, uh, we've seen it's dropped by about 13.5%. So that's how you look at that, that table um, and, and look at it for Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, etc. Um, but this is also why, you know, we still like Brisbane up 42.7%, only down 11%. And that started in June 2022. And we really like Perth at the moment, 25.9% um, up, only 0.9 of a percent down starting from July last year. So Perth's actually been positive since July last year and, and continue to make money. So it's had some negative downs, but it's only down 0.9 of a percent all up. Um, so that's nearly a year's worth of movement, which is quite interesting. Uh, there are some really great opportunities out there at the moment. Uh, you only need to do two things. You need to know your data and you need to act. 
acting is the is the hardest thing for a lot of people at the moment because there's so much influence out there from the media, from friends, from family telling you don't buy. Now let's take a look at uh, Capital City Houses with the strongest drop in values for 2022. And no surprise, they're all in Sydney, where I'm from. So suburbs in Sydney City and inner south, northern beaches and eastern suburb regions dominated 2022's list for the largest falls in house prices and unit values across the capital cities, according to CoreLogic. I only want to explore houses right now. I think units are very important, but I don't have time today to go through all of them. If you want to have a chat to me about it, please give us a call. Uh, but if we look here, Narrabeen, Surrey Hills and Redfern houses recorded the largest falls in value over the year, down more than 25%. That's a huge drop, okay? Um, unit values in, in Centennial Park and Mona Vale fell by 23.1% um, and 20.8% respectively. So there's some good articles on this stuff. So if you want to see it, give me a call. I'm happy to send you those links. Uh, I think this is always interesting, just seeing how much product is on the market for sale. So across the nation, 20.3% below the five-year average is the amount of product on the market for sale, which is, again, and I'll, I've said this many, many times, probably one of the reasons why we're not seeing a huge drop in property prices, because there's not enough people selling and there's more people buying, and that's just going to keep it stable. 20.3 is the national average, but if you actually look at the capital cities like um, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane on the East Coast, it's actually closer to 35% is the amount of stock that's below the national average there for five years. So I think that's, that's quite interesting. We're seeing higher demands definitely from our clients at the moment for units. Uh, units, uh, I've said it before, units have been uh, crapped on by the Australian media for quite some time now, whether it is... Uh, Alexandria, um, the Cube, the Green Square, um, or uh, everybody's favorite terrible leaning tower of Pisa, which is in Homebush. Um, everyone knows about that and uh, obviously the product that they have there. So I think there's been a lot of negative press, which has scared people away from units. But units across the combined capitals are actually providing a 29.41% higher percentage of rental yield than houses at the moment. So units have also actually weathered the, the storm in regards to the drop in property prices far better. Uh, the current annual return on houses versus units shows that houses have lost about 9.9% when units have only dipped by about 2.7%. And in a lot of areas too, the disparity in price between units and houses is significant. And I think we're going to start to see a lot more people trading space, which is when they were buying in places like you know Kellyville and um, uh, places further and further away from the CBD. There's nothing wrong with Kellyville, by the way. Lovely area. Got some friends that live there. But I'm saying when they're buying, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 kilometers, Box Hill, Rouse Hill, all these areas in the far west for Sydney, and obviously Melbourne, Geelong, and all those areas, I think people thought, I really would like that space, like a big backyard. But I think now a lot of people are going, wait a second, I actually want to be in the right place rather than be with all that space. Rental trends have definitely diversified. Um, with the highest rental appreciation now occurring, as I said, within the unit sector um, of the three largest capital cities, led by a 16.7% jump in rents for Sydney um, over the past year. Weekly rental values for units are now 19% higher than the onset of COVID-19 in Sydney, 10.4% higher across Melbourne, and 236 up in Brisbane. Uh, I've got some properties in Brisbane, and the rents have just gone ballistic. Um, which is great for me, not so good for the renters, but at the end of the day, they need a place to rent and I'm the landlord giving them that opportunity. Uh, over the weekend, we purchased this one bedroom, one bathroom unit, which was actually featured in the Sydney Morning Herald. And uh, we bought this for an overseas client who will be returning home shortly. We're getting more and more clients like that. I'll put a link in the uh, to the article in the description of the video uh, below this on YouTube. Uh, there were 14 registered buyers, and that was a mis mix of first home buyers and investors. Uh, bidding actually began at only $500,000, and the price rose in variant increments as Providence buyers agent and director Linton Stevenson battled against nine other buyers. The reserve was actually only set at 600000 but demand pushed through at a $700,000 mark, uh, it actually turned into only a two-buyer race at that stage where Linton was up against a Queensland investor. Uh, Linton was the highest bidder at $721,000 when the hammer fell. And I believe one of the photographers snapped a photo of Linton during the auction. Um, 
just majestic. Uh, look at his eyes. That is a man in the zone and definitely someone I want in my corner when I'm bidding for properties. Uh, I think he actually stopped the auction six times to contact the client and ask them additional questions, which drives other buyers crazy. Uh, so good on him for doing it. Great result for that client over the weekend. That just one of a few that we actually got away. Um, I'm noticing more positive articles about buying property and maybe the media is starting to see less engagement with their doom and gloom campaigns. So they're maybe switching tactics. I don't know. I'd love to know what you think about that. Listen, if you like what you've seen here and you want to be kept in the know with the Australian property market, make sure to like this video and hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you'd like further education, you can download our eBooks. They're free. The links are in the YouTube description below. I want to thank you for your time today and I will see you next month.